Well, good morning, lovely ladies and gentlemen. Steve Collins coming to you from bright, shiny San Antonio, Texas. The second most powerful, passionate, purposeful coaching speaker in the world. Hope you guys are ready for this Friday that you woke up thinking about what you are grateful for rather than waking up thinking about what's missing, what's not right, what's out of place, why you're not where you intend to be, why the world is coming against you, and why everything is the way that it is. Hopefully you woke up intentional about focusing on what you're grateful for. If you did not, you will be by the end of this video. What does the B-I-B-L-E say about the weather? I'm gonna do something different than I normally do this morning, and that is I am going to simply provide you some statements to stir you up to think about and to come to your own conclusions. I have no intention of advising, consulting, or coaching to a desired end other than for you to give pensive, sober thought to what I'm about to say and to come up with your own conclusions. What does the B-I-B-L-E say about weather? I'm gonna stick to factual statements. Now, I know for those of you that need a reason <clears throat> to live the way you wanna live without a sense of accountability and not having to feel like that there should be any regulations for your life, I know the weakest tactic in human history is to attempt to discredit a source believing that I myself and my conclusions and all of my thoughts and education have brought me to a place that I can make my own choices because quite frankly, I am God. I am the God of my life and I decide what's right or wrong. It's all relative anyway, love, eh? This ain't for you. This is gonna make you mad. I hope it does. The Bible. Here's what we know about weather. For those of you who have heard of Job, even folks that ain't church folk know about Job. They hear about Job, the patience of Job. Man, the patience of Job. People talk about the patience of Job. Don't talk about that in the book of Job. Just describes an incredible dude, lived an incredible life, was an amazing man. He was so set apart in his heart towards God that when the old devil came up to try to accuse men to God, God said, have you considered my servant Job? There's nobody like him on earth. His heart is upright towards me. The guy's the bomb. Dot com. And the devil goes, well, yeah, he is because you done given him everything he ever wanted. You see, you gave him a beautiful wife. You gave him 10 boys and girls. You made him super, super rich and wealthy. You, that's how I talk about the devil, yeah. You made him super rich and wealthy, Lord. You, you have a hedge of protection surrounded around him. You have given him all the desires of his heart. He's wealthy. He's prosperous. He's doing great. He doesn't lack for anything. Sound like America? Anyway, God says, <clears throat> what do you want to do? He goes, you let, the devil says, you let me take that crap away from him. And let's see if he still worships you. Let me take his stuff and let me see if he still is after you. South America. God said, do what you want to do. Just don't touch his life. The next series of events that takes place is some of the most gut-wrenching, horrific, detailed descriptions of a man's life that goes from amazingly blessed to unbelievably broken in less than a few hours. I will give you a summary of what happened. Job living his life, doing his thing, read about it, book of Job. This is when trouble has to take a number like a Baskin Robbins and get in line for you. While he was just doing his thing, one of his servants came in and gave him a report about how a band of raiders had come in and stolen all his flocks and all his sheep, everything gone, everything was lost, they killed all the people, and I'm the only one left to tell you, you lost all your stuff, and the Bible says, and while he was still speaking, 
the next guy came in and said, you're not going to believe what happened. We took the sheep and fire came down from heaven and it just consumed all the sheep. They're gone. It consumed all the servants. Everybody died. All your sheep are gone. And, all. and we're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. He was a multi-gazillionaire, guys. Fire came down and went everywhere, burned everything up, and all the servants are dead. I'm the only one that survived to come tell you this news. And the Bible says, and while he was still speaking, a band of raiders came in and took all your gear, took all your camels, took all your stuff. They shot everybody, they took everything. They just ravaged everything, and it's all gone, and they killed everybody, and I, I escaped. I'm the only one who escaped, and I, I'm here to tell you, you lost it all. And the Bible goes on to say, and while he was still talking, the final servant came in and that servant came in and said Joe all of your sons and daughters were at your oldest son's house having a feast and a celebration and a mighty rushing wind came in literally caused the entire house to come down crushed and killed all of your children all of your servants except me and I'm the only one who escaped to tell you what had happened. Now, ladies and gentlemen, he went from having everything to having less than nothing within a matter of about 30 minutes, if you time it out from the first servant to the last servant. Top of the world to crushed. Now, lots of people have lost their stuff. Lots of people have lost family members. Lots of people have lost a lot of things in this life. Job lost just about all of it. And I think about the war room of Satan sitting at the table with his board of demonic directors when he came back and said, guys, we have been given the thumbs up by God to do whatever we want. Because he's saying Job's going to still be on his side even though we, we, now we can't mess with the man's life. We can do anything to everything else in his life and I can just see the devil right now saying you I want you to gather the band of Chaldeans to come in and raid and I want you to grab him take him kill everything but leave one servant to run back to be the bearer of bad news to Job you I want you to now get this however he can do it stir up the fire so that the fire will come in and fire will consume all of his sheep I want you to go and take a mighty wind. Does this mean he has access to weather? Read the book. You decide. Mighty wind to come in. His sons and daughters are partying at the oldest son's house today. Kill them all at one time. He goes to the next guy and he says, I want you to go to his wife. She's in the marketplace today and I want you to come and bring up. I want you to. You know what? Let's rob him of everything except his wife. And I can just see the demons in hell at the table saying, why, Satan, would we take everything, his stuff, everything, kill his kids? Why the heck would you leave his wife, the lover of his soul, the bride of his youth? Why would you do that? And he said, I believe, it ain't written in there, but I believe this, Ain't nothing hurt a man more than his wife turning on him. That'll be worse than her dying, is her turning against him, betraying him, and breaking him down. Let's leave her. And if you go throughout scripture and follow the story, there was a moment the lowest of the low when even Job's health had been affected he had boils from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet that he used the pot broken pots to scrape off as dogs in the town came and licked his sores it says and his wife said are you still holding to your integrity why don't you curse God and die his wife old devil knew what he was doing when he kept her around didn't he what is my point ladies and gentlemen my point is fire was activated. My point is winds were activated. Does the enemy have access to weather? Read the book. You decide. Here's another story. Jesus taking a quick 20 minute power nap 
on the Sea of Galilee when a massive storm ensues. And seasoned sailors and warriors, scared for their life, shake him awake. Don't you love that Jesus can crash out during the storm of your life, baby? Come on. He's that cool. They wake him up. Master, master, help us. We're about to die. This wasn't no baby storm. This is probably a category three or four or five hurricane they were coming into. And Jesus said, you have little faith. Reached out his hand and said to the storm, peace, be still. And it immediately subsided. Does the old enemy have access to weather? Read the book of Job. Does a good Lord have authority and power over weather? Read your Gospels. Now, what does that mean for you? And what is the conclusion I want to leave you with today? For those of you that are Christ followers, he says, greater works than these will you do in my name by faith. How? Steve Collins? I don't know. What do you do, Steve Collins? I don't know. How do we figure it out, Steve Collins? I don't know. What's the formula? I don't know. All I know is he said, greater works than these will you do in my name. Does that mean you, my friend, by faith, can stretch your hand out towards southern Florida, Cuba, and say, peace, be still? And you can change and affect it? That's what I believe it says in the B-I-B-L-E. Now that you've been formed, you are informed, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to be 98% of the world and just go, well, that's just crazy, Steve Collins, or are you going to activate your faith and believe and even use that to back it up and say, he did it, he's in me, so I can do it. What you going to do? It's up to you. Have a great day, guys.